In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me in praying together the prayer of the day. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turned death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And
found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 and chapter 5 verse 1. The Apostle Paul writes, But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel today is found in Mark 
chapter 3, beginning at verse 7. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him. Hearing all that he was doing, they came to him in great numbers from Judea, Jerusalem, Edomia, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. He went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him and to be sent out to proclaim the message and to have authority to cast out demons. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Please join me in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Maker and our Redeemer. Amen. In our Gospel lesson for today, Jesus is pressed in on all sides. Massive crowds are gathering around him, so much so that he is concerned even about being crushed by the crowds of people. Later on, it says that they, they were so swamped with people seeking out um, help from Jesus that they didn't even have time to eat. It, it was a crazy experience that only Jesus and the disciples had ever had. Jesus, this charismatic teacher, was healing people, casting out demons, and at the Sea of Galilee, uh, because of the crowd, he asked the disciples to get a boat ready that he can go out in the water. This is the scene of the Sermon by the Sea. This is the scene where Jesus preaches what we know as the Sermon on the Mount from the Sea of Galilee from a boat. And after this goes on for some time, the scriptures say Jesus went home. Home at that point was probably Capernaum. And as he went to his own home, uh, the crowds once again gathered around Jesus, seeking healing and relief from evil spirits. There is an interlude here where the scribes from Jerusalem who had come to kind of check out Jesus accused Jesus of casting out demons because he himself was possessed by demons. And he, he refutes that, um, developing the line that says, a house divided against itself cannot stand, used by Abraham Lincoln uh, at the beginning of our American Civil War. It just doesn't work. If you destroy what you are about, you can't survive. And Jesus says, I am about God's work. I'm not about the work of Satan. And they back off. In the other Gospels, they ask some other questions. And in the midst of this accusation and the charges brought against Jesus, his family comes to his aid. His mother, his brother, and his sisters all come to, I think, gather him together. Um, they were there to get him out of there. They were there to take him away from these accusations. They were there to bring him to a place where he actually could, along with his disciples, rest and receive some reprieve from the crowds of people. But even as his mother, his brothers and sisters come to get him, Jesus takes this, as an opportunity for a teaching moment. As the crowds are gathered around and the family comes to get him, Jesus asks, who are my mother and brother and sisters? And as Jesus looks at the people around him in Matthew, it specifically says he looks at his disciples those closest to him, whom he has just called as apostles. And he says, here, these people are my mother and my brothers. And then he goes on to say, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. And the question I'd like us to ask today is, then what does that mean? Whoever does the will of God. What is the will of God? The Gospel of John is filled with images about the will of God. And in John, the sixth chapter, we find this. Jesus said to them, 
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This indeed is the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. This indeed is the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him. God's will is first for us to believe in Jesus. As I said, the Gospel of John is filled with that. John concludes his Gospel by saying, I've written these things to you so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The will of God is that we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. In fact, the Gospel of John begins the same way. It begins by saying, He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, He gave power to become children of God who were born not of the blood, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but born of the will of God. The will of God is for us first to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the one sent from God for us the one who accomplished an atoning sacrifice that satisfies God's payment for sin. All who believe, all who claim the name of Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, are part of the family of God. We are the family of God. And so as Jesus asked the question, who are my mother and my brother and my sisters? Those who believe that Jesus is Messiah are his mother and brother and sisters. We are family. And we live as family. Sometimes family disagrees. Sometimes family has uh, disputes among themselves. But no matter what happens in a family, In a family, you've got each other's back. In a family, you support each other. In a family, you pray for each other and you seek the best for each other. You pray that God will pour out God's blessing upon God's family. We as a community of faith are God's family and not just members of our congregation, but we are family with all those throughout the world who claim the name of Christ, all those who believe that Jesus is Messiah, we are one and we are called to act as family, to encourage each other, to support each other, to pray for each other, to rejoice when good things happen to our family. And so today the question is who is our family? Our family is everyone who claims the name of Jesus, who believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Amen.
let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe, especially our brothers and sisters in Lucani, Tanzania, and in Tecate, Mexico. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy, especially Lowell Benson and Floyd Redepenny. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace and joining together in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
joining us this second Sunday after Pentecost. Um, we're glad that you are able to take time to join us uh, in these uh, video worship services. A couple quick announcements. Uh, first of all, VBS registration is continuing. If you have children, grandchildren, neighborhood kids that you would like to get registered, please do so. So we have a good count of how many people will be participating in Vacation Bible School. A reminder that on Wednesday, we continue our Wednesday evening, six o'clock gap grace and praise worship service on our North Lawn, assuming the weather is good. That service is preceded at 5.30 by a uh, barbecue, which you are welcome to join us for. Uh, and uh, we encourage you to come and be a part of those Wednesday evening gatherings. Uh, if there's still popcorn to pick up, talk with uh, Melissa Whitman and she can get you your popcorn um, and get things all settled there. One note uh, uh, for the congregation is that Floyd Redepenning's funeral will be held tomorrow, Monday, June 7th here at church. The visitation will be from 9 till 11, the service at 11 o'clock, followed by a light lunch uh, in our fellowship hall. Those are our announcements. I invite you to receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.